All right, well, they say third time's a charm. First time the video stopped working, second time I got a phone call right as we restarted. So maybe this time it'll work and it will go well. Um, so as I was trying to say before, this will be a fairly short live video. I can't find my tripod, so you guys are being held up by a tissue box because I get creative like that sometimes. Um, again, these guys are coming from RJ over at Clog Echoes. He's a wonderful dude. He's a great friend of mine. He's helped me a lot through breeding. Um, it's supposed to be an unboxing, and it kind of is. The box was already opened, but I'll explain a little more when we get some people in here. If you guys want to get in and share it so we can get some more, I'm going to go through and share it all real quick. And then we will get started. Like I said, this won't be too long. I can always pull one or two other animals out when I get the chance. After we're done with these guys, I don't want to keep them out too, too much longer. Gonna go through and pull an RJ, as I like to call it, and share this to all of the Leo groups that I'm in. The more people there are to talk to, I find it more fun. Um, obviously, doing this is fun in itself, but when there's more people to interact with, that's always more fun. Like I said, these guys are coming from RJ over at Claw Geckos. He's a wonderful guy. If you guys want to share it, get some more people in here, and we'll go through, unbox them real quick, and then we can maybe pull another gecko out, or pull one of my other animals out, and just sit and talk for a little while. I got a little while to hang out. I'm in so many groups, sometimes it's hard to find them. So, like I said, if you guys want to go through and share to your friends, anyone you might think is interested, that'd be wonderful. And we will get started. Again, as I said before, I can't find my tripod, so you're being propped up with a tissue box because I get creative like that. This is the third attempt at this, but again, these are geckos that are coming from RJ over at Claw Geckos. I've always wanted to work with some of the genetics that RJ pushes out. I say pushes out, but some of the genetics that RJ breeds. And as always, RJ is an amazing guy. If you guys are looking for any of these genetics, I definitely would say go to him. I am beyond ecstatic that I was able to work with RJ to get these animals. Um, like I said, they're this is going to be a quick unboxing. The box was already opened. RJ and I felt it appropriate to 
opened the box before I actually got home. These geckos were delayed a day. So that, as everyone who ships knows, there is the chance of delays. That can always happen. Delays are a possibility that no one wants to have happen, but it can happen. Not the best. These geckos were shipped out Wednesday night. They were supposed to arrive yesterday. Sadly, they didn't. I've already opened the box, like I said. They are completely fine. A delay usually is not a problem, in my experience. Um, but, as I was saying, RJ and I felt it best to check just to be safe before getting all the way the hour drive back from the hub home in case something had to be done. We both knew that probably wouldn't have to do anything. And as we sus suspected, the geckos are fine. Um, thankfully, that's the good thing about ship your reptiles and reptiles to you and stuff like that. Is they're very good about working with you if something does come up. Whereas... FedEx works with them, but they don't always have the information you're looking for. I got there yesterday after the tracking information wasn't updated at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon when they were supposed to be there at 10. And basically got told, yeah, they're delayed in Memphis. They might be here tomorrow. They might not. Obviously, with live animals, that's an issue. Makes you kind of... A little anxious for them to show up, but we do have five geckos in here, and I'm very glad they're here. I'm very happy that they're all right. Um, like I said, these are coming from RJ over at Claw Geckos, who produces some amazing animals. I've been going through looking at pictures RJ and I have sent because we've been good friends for a while now. He's helped me get to where I am now as a breeder through information and just talking half the time we talk just genetics for an hour or two or just anything gecko wise but i was able to thankfully work with him to get into these and in here we have a pair of tangerine radars and we have a one to two group of ggmps both of these are genes that I've always wanted to work with. So getting into it, especially with stock from RJ, who as a breeder is very good and has taught me a lot about what to do. Um, RJ tracks all of his information back as far as he can. I have the info when I bought these from who geckos came from, who he bought them from, who they bought them from. So right now we have a little female, GGGMP, who is very dark. She's doing all right. She's obviously not too happy being stuck in a box for two nights. And as RJ likes to say, this is my first time working with them, but RJ likes to say they're mood rings. Normally, from what I've seen, she is very light. But as you can imagine, being in a box that long doesn't really put you in the best of moods. These, the GGGMPs are for, originated from Golden Gate Geckos. Marsha over at Golden Gate Geckos spent two decades, I believe, working on this pattern or working on this to get it to that light coloration that we see today. Um, she's obviously pretty dark, like I said, but... She's still young, if you can tell, and that's the other good thing about RJ and getting your animals from breeders, is even being as young as she is and being stuck in a box for a night longer than she should have been, shipping-wise, since they were delayed, she's still perfectly fine just to sit here and relax. Now, I do have everything set up already. I made sure to do that before we started, just so these guys aren't too stressed out. And if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to talk about anything I can. And as I always say, if I don't know the answer, I will get it for you. Um, and you also have to forget my ums. I'm not a big fan of doing anything camera-wise. But she 
will be bred out in the 2020 season once she's a little bigger. Obviously, she's too young now. I like to give my animals a year at least before they are bred. And she is gorgeous. Even now, she's gorgeous. But when she's light like she usually is, she's a gorgeous animal. RJ has been very great in helping with a lot of things. If you guys are looking for GGG MPs or even Tangerine Radars or anything else, he works with a lot of stuff, mostly Bell stuff. He is getting into Tremper now. I would definitely recommend going over to RJ. Like I said, if you have any questions or just want to talk at all, feel free. I'm more than happy. For such a small gecko who's been stuck in a box for two nights, you can see RJ does really work with his animals. She is perfectly content just hanging out. The other issue with being stuck in a box all night is you do have the tendency to go to the bathroom in your cup that you're in, which four out of the five did. Again, like I said, these guys were delayed, so they are a little more cranky than normal. And I will show you this girl in one second. How's everyone doing today? This is a little more crazier than the younger one at the moment. But this is an adult GGG MP female. I decided to pick up the adult after already deciding to pick up the younger female and the adult male. That way next season I can start producing the GGG MPs instead of having to wait till 2022. It's kind of a little bit of an investment on my part. I've always wanted to work with this morph. She's nice and dark at the moment, but she will lighten up. They are like mood rings. And again, RJ, great thing about RJ, they all love... RJ tracks all of his stuff back. He's taught me a lot about it, tracking all of your animals' lineage back. So I have the lineage as far back as RJ can go of where these animals came from. Like the male GGGMP in here, I can track him back to his parents, where his parents were purchased, all the way back to Marsha at Golden Gate Geckos, which is where the GGGMPs came from. She worked for a couple decades on getting the GGGMPs to be lighter. They used to be darker. And RJ has actually produced a couple of dark GGG MPs, Golden Gate Gecko Murphy's Patternless. And he's actually going to be breeding back and trying to breed some of the darkness back into it. Um, but I've always liked them. I've just never really found anyone that... I wanted to get into with I've only purchased my geckos from a select few and that's nothing bad against anyone else it's just I have the people that I know so it's the people I like to buy from people I'm person breeders I'm personal friends with are the ones I like to go to first that's not saying anything about any other breeder that's not saying no other breeder is good that's just I have several breeder friends that I like to talk to first before anyone else to see if they have what I want. And if they don't have what I want, half the time they will send me to where they know that breeder has what I want. So this girl will be used next season to produce some more GGGMPs over here at Elemental Reptiles. Um, RJ, like I said, great guy. Being able to get some of these genetics off of him is always a good thing for me. He's helped me a lot to get to where I am. 
Speaking of the devil, RJ is now on the video. Your geckos are amazing, dude. The GGG MPs are nice and dark from the uh, trip, but other than that, they are perfectly fine. That little girl is, that little temp sex female is nice and calm for being so young and being stuck in a box for a couple nights longer than they should have. And by a couple nights, I mean one. But this girl is amazing. And I can't wait to pair her next season and start producing some GGG MPs. Yep, we were just talking about that, how they're a little mood ring. She's already kind of starting to lighten up a little bit compared to when she first came out of the box. Um, like I said, you guys, these guys came from RJ over at Claw Geckos. So please feel free if you have anything you're looking for if you're looking for GGG MPs or Tangerine Radars, which is the other project that I got from RJ today to start working with in the 2022 season, please go check him out. I recommend him wholeheartedly. We've been great friends for a long time. Um, but this girl, I can't wait, RJ. You produce some wonderful animals, and it's getting me super excited for next season and the 2022 season. Like I said, I don't want to take too long pulling these guys out just because they were delayed. So I'm going to move on to the next gecko. And if we're done, when we get done these, if we still want to talk, if you guys have any questions or anything, I'd be happy to pull one of my geckos that aren't a little stressed from shipping delays out. Killer animals from RJ, always. I looked at these Tang radars that you guys will see here in a minute when I open the box, and pictures and his live videos do not do them justice at all. They're so nice in person. I can't wait to be producing with them. These GGG MPs, these are two of my dream genetics I've always wanted to work with, but I'm a little picky sometimes on who comes into my breeding stock. Obviously, these guys will be going into quarantine. If you breed geckos, you know. It's not that I don't trust RJ, and RJ knows that. But when you get new geckos, no matter who they came from, no matter how much you trust them, you always want to quarantine your animals just in case something happens. I'm trying to do this with one hand so I can take a drink, so forgive me. Next up, we got the male that I originally purchased with that small temperature sex female before deciding after seeing a week or two later RJ had posted up that female to pick up the female so I could start next season instead of 2022 and he is gorgeous as well this is the male GGGMP you can see he's not as dark Like RJ says, they are mood rings. Everyone I've seen. And he is just calm as can be. Doesn't care. He's like, oh, I was in a box a night longer than I was supposed to be. Kind of sucked. But I'm just going to hang out on your warm hand. And that's the other good thing about breeders and shipping and stuff. RJ packs really well. The heat pack was still nice and warm when I opened it up, even though they were a day late. And like I said, sometimes you do get delays in shipping, and it happens. And sometimes people do get a little upset about it, which is understandable. It's live animals, and obviously it's animals, not only are they live, but you spent probably some good money on them. Um, and... Nothing against FedEx, but FedEx isn't necessarily helpful. I walked in yesterday and got told, oh, they should be here tomorrow. They're stuck in Memphis. I don't know why. Which is like, okay, that's helpful. Thank you. And as I'm walking out, RJ's like, yeah, I just got off the phone with the shipping company. So if you can keep in touch with your breeder and just keep an eye on it, you'll be fine. Even if a delay happens, you'll be all right. Sometimes it's kind of funny. I got there this morning, 
drove an hour down because I didn't want to risk them being shipped to my house and something happening on a truck or something. I'd rather drive the hour down and the hour back to pick up at the hub when I'm getting geckos shipped in. And it will be the same thing when I'm shipping geckos out. Um, being in Maine, and like RJ said, Memphis for a day, then coming back up to Maine, it can be tricky, especially with the weather right now. We go from 65, 70s, and 50-something at night to low 40s at night with a high of 50 during the day at the moment. So it can be tricky, but you always know... If you keep an eye on it, you'll be good. I walked in today and I'm like, I have a live animal shipment I'm picking up. And the lady just looks at me and goes, ew, the one that says reptiles, which, you know, being me and loving these guys the way I do, I'm like, okay, so that's how this is going to go. But that's a topic for a different day. I love all animals, and I would never say anything like that about your dog or your cat, so why do you say it about my geckos? But, like I said, this guy is just perfectly happy just hanging out, and I can't wait to work with him next year. You guys have any questions or anything rj's in here so he can answer as well if i don't know i'll be happy to talk about whatever you want gonna move on to the next gecko and now we're getting into the project i'm probably most excited to work with from rj although i can't wait for these ggg mps to be producing for me either yeah he is very chill rj even that young temperature sex female, like I said earlier, just came out and hung out for a little bit. Like I said, I got home a little while ago, but with them being delayed, I wanted to get everything set up before we went live. That way they can just go into the quarantine rack and quarantine for their time. Relax from shipping. I know I said it earlier, but like I said, when you're getting animals, geckos, whether you... Tr I trust RJ, and he knows that for a fact I trust him, no matter what. But... No matter what, you still want to quarantine your animal just because you don't know. You can trust him and then something he doesn't know about, which probably won't happen, might pop up, which can be an issue. So it's just a good practice whether you're getting them from a trusted breeder or not. This is the Tempt Sex Female Tangerine Radar. And RJ, she does not do those videos or pictures justice at all. And it probably won't show in this live, but she is gorgeous. And I see what you were talking about with that male, too, just looking at him through the deli cup. This girl is beautiful, and I cannot wait to be working with this project now if you guys don't know RJ often his goal with this project even though they're called tangerine radars is he wants to get a nice deep yellow instead of the orange and some bold brown markings And he, in his group, is well on the way to it. And I think I got lucky in purchasing these two geckos because even RJ himself is talking these geckos are turning out amazing towards what he wants to do. And he's given me permission to continue to work towards the same goal as I love his idea for it. So I'm going to continue with RJ's idea and try and breed the orange out and get it more of a yellow down the tail like he's doing and that brown because it's just such a gorgeous gecko 
especially with the contrast of those eyes. And she's just chill. It's happy to be hanging out. A gorgeous, gorgeous animals. I love all my geckos, but I think this may quickly become one of my favorite projects to be working with. The lives and the videos, and I pop into RJ's live videos whenever I get the chance, unless I'm at work. And he usually makes it a point to let me see... But when I was waiting to ship these guys out, he makes it a point to let me see the geckos and they pictures and everything just don't do them justice. Those wonderful radar eyes. They are light sensitive a little bit. So with that albino. She's just a gorgeous animal. And the male, RJ, is a little happy that the male went to me, but at the same time, I think he's a little upset that the male went anywhere that I picked up. The male has turned out gorgeous as well. I think working towards that group, that goal that RJ has in mind that I'm going to be working with as well will be easier with these two. They're definitely giving me a, a good starting point. Yeah. I could hear it in your voice when you went live the other day, RJ. As you were pulling him out. As always, when I buy from a breeder, that breeder knows that they get to buy back from me. Without a problem. And exactly like RJ just said, now there's a larger pool to progress from. In the future, I can pick up a couple animals from him again to add into my group. Or he can pick up a couple animals from this project to add into his group. Whatever we think works better towards our goal. And as of right now, we're both working towards that same goal. Of that yellow coloration instead of the orange Trying to breed that orange out. And I will show you guys the male. And the male is gorgeous. This girl is amazing. All of these geckos are amazing. But the male is gorgeous towards what RJ is trying to work towards. And what I'm going to be working towards when these guys are old enough to breed. If anyone has any questions or anything, please feel free to ask. The only time these geckos are giving me issue is going back in the cup, but that's understandable. I mean, they've been in a box for a little while, longer than they should have been, anyway. And this is the male, and this boy is amazing. And I'm so glad I picked him up when I did from RJ, because if he looked like this when I went to buy him, RJ probably wouldn't have sold him to me, because I think RJ probably would have kept him. This guy is beautiful. You can see that. You can see that a uh, orange or a yellowish coloration, and it's working its way down the tail. That orange is kind of coming out a little bit as he's not in the camera, and he looks a lot like the father of this project. That, like RJ just said, he got from. Hector over at TGA, who was also a good friend of mine. Um, this is perfect, perfect start for me towards this goal that RJ has in mind that I'm going to be working with as well. To have these two animals to start with, I couldn't have asked for a better pair to start with to start working on this project over here at Elemental Reptiles. Sometimes it's a little iffy when you buy them younger because you have an idea of what they'll turn out to be. Sometimes they turn out you'll... What was I going to say? Excuse me, I lost my train of thought. I was reading RJ's comments. 
sometimes when you buy them younger, they turn out not as well as you expected them to be. Or they turn out better than you expected. And this guy, especially with that snake eye on that eye right there. And actually, snake eyes in both eyes, which I myself am partial to the snake eyes in my radars and my raptors. And this is actually the first group of bells that will be being worked with over here at Elemental Reptiles. So that's another huge thank you to RJ for getting me into the another of the albino genes. I work mostly up until now. I've only worked with Tremper albino, which is what makes the raptors and stuff. Whereas bell albino is how you get the radar. I can't wait to see him after he's fired up and less stressed, RJ. It's going to be amazing. He is definitely, I can't thank you enough for these geckos, and I definitely can't thank you enough for such a great start to the project, like I said. I think I'm going to produce some killers in 2022. And like I said, those snake eyes, I've always been partial to the snake eyes. And that's the good thing about working with other breeders too. Like RJ just said, seeing the uh, bell eyes at hatch, how red they are. I've hatched a couple of raptors. And you can kind of tell, but sometimes that hatch is a little harder, especially with them being light sensitive from the albino and the eclipse. Their light sensitivity makes it a little harder to see the eyes. And oftentimes, at least with what I've hatched, which you can tell when they're older that they definitely are eclipse. With what I've hatched, sometimes it's like, okay, that looks like a solid black eye instead of a red eye. Just no cares in the world. If you guys want to keep talking, we can keep talking. I can pull out some more geckos. Or even pull out some of the pets here at Elemental Reptiles. Of the reptilian variety or the amphibian variety so I do have a couple others not many as I try and keep my pets down to a manageable level when you're breeding animals it does take up a good portion of time um, I work at a distribution center for Walmart so I work from 4 o'clock in the morning till whenever I'm done and then I get home and I take care of animals and stuff so having a whole bunch of added pets is never a problem, but it does make time be a little harder to manage. I have a bearded dragon that's staring at me right now. So sadly, I'm going to have to leave you guys looking at a box while I go put these guys away real quick. Or maybe... How about this? We'll leave you looking at a box while I go put these guys away next to my girlfriend's wonderful beta tank. If it'll focus. It probably won't. There it goes. You probably won't see the beta. You might. I'm going to go very quickly put these away. And I will pull out... Pull out one of my Mandarin Sun Glows that I'm super excited to work with next year. I don't have too long to hang out, but I do have a little while. 
like I said, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. I try to be humble, so if I can't answer it, I'll tell you that. And RJ can help me, or I will find the answer for you. It's one of my big things, is everyone starts somewhere. No one is an expert. We're always learning new things about these animals, about genetics, whatever. And to think you know everything, in my opinion, it kind of turns me off of buying anything from you or anything like that. Just because no one, like I said, no one knows everything. So give me a second. I will go put these guys in their tubs in the quarantine rack real quick and wash my hands. And I will grab one of the other geckos. And we can go through two or three of the other geckos real quick before I have to go. Maybe we'll pull something else. Like I said, please feel free to ask questions or just say anything. I love talking to you guys. I want to try doing these lives a little more often. Um, I also have a YouTube channel that has some videos going up if you guys want to go follow that. That's Elemental Reptiles as well. I did a video... Two videos with Mr. Drew of Mr. Drew and his animals too, which is a rescue or a uh, reptile rescue and rehabilitation slash education center here in Lewiston, Maine, which is right about 10 minutes, five minutes from where I live. So you guys can go check that out. I have a couple other ideas that I'm going to be tossing to some other people to see if they want to join in. Like I said, I want to do these lives a little more. I'm going to be doing some more videos. Um, RJ, if he wants, we've done it before, but maybe I'll see if I can find a way to bring him into a live one of these days. And we can just chat. I love doing stuff with RJ whenever I get the chance. Um, I have a live from the beginning of this year or last year where I had RJ over the phone. And we were just talking all things geckos. Um, so maybe we can do that again if RJ's up to it and I can find a way to bring him in to the live. I actually might be able to do it right now if I wanted to and he wanted to, but we'll probably save that for another live. Give me one second to put these away, wash my hands, and I'll be right back. Maybe you'll see a glimpse of a blue with kind of red beta right in the back corner over there. He's a little shy sometimes. Looks like you'll see him though. Alright, I'm back. 
and I have pulled out this guy for you to see. This is a white and yellow trimper, and he will be, when I breed him, my first white and yellow. He hasn't bred for me yet. I got this guy from Rob Delaney of Delaney's Geckos. He is gorgeous. Coloration for me in my geckos is always a big thing. The certain genetics and how they play a role in the coloration and the patterning and everything is one of the many reasons that drew me to geckos when I was younger. And I've always been a big, big into science. So growing up doing the science and everything being able to get into this and do the science behind the genetics has been amazing. I love doing it. But yeah, this guy is a white and yellow tremper, and I can't wait to use him. Adding that white and yellow into some of my other trempers will make some of the coloration just pop. What are you guys, if you guys are working on anything, what are you guys working on? Any big plans for next season or anything? I've got this guy who will be going with my trempers. I have a Mandarin Sun Glow group that will be going with a male Mandarin Blood across. I've got that GGGMP group that you guys just saw that I picked up from RJ that'll be happening next year and that Tang Raider the year after. And I have some snows. A couple of super snows maybe. We'll see. I'm still debating on that project. And a Fascio male that I... Max Snow... Efasio possible head eclipse. Head eclipse. I'll have to double check his records, but I'm pretty sure he's possible head eclipse. Sometimes you can't remember genetics off the top of your head, depending on the animals that you have. But he will be crossed into some of my snows, probably. Get some Fascio crosses. This guy, he is wonderful when he gets out. He acts like Godzilla when he's inside the, his rack. I'll walk past the rack and he'll attack the rack like I'm about to feed him. He wants to bite my face off, but as you can tell, as soon as he gets out, he just sits there and chills. Like I said, if you guys have anything you want to talk about, feel free. Any projects you're working on. I know RJ has the Tang Radars and the GGGMPs and Halloween Mask to Mandarin Tangerine, if I remember correctly. Crosses that he's trying to do, which is going to turn out to an amazing project as well. is one of my only geckos that has that evil little grin. Always looks like he wants to eat you, but once he's out, he's perfectly content. Sadly, with COVID going on, the expos and everything have been a bit of an issue for some of us. I didn't go to the last one. Um... I don't have any animals. I might have one animal that I would sell at the moment. A Max Snow. Max Snow, Head Eclipse, Possible Het Blizzard. If I'm remembering correctly off the top of my head. I'm still not sure if I'm going to release them though. 
He is a male. I haven't shipped yet. That is something I'm working on. It's something that will be happening next season. With it getting colder here, it's probably not something that will happen this season. Even if I were to sell that Max No Mail. I will go grab one of the other geckos real quick. I'm going to keep you guys here as it's just easier. Not having a tripod or anything. Leaving me hands free. Like I said, what are you guys working on? You guys, do you breed? Do you just have pets? Want to talk genetics? No matter what, I love talking about animals. I love talking about geckos. So it does not phase me at all. I'll be right back with another gecko. All right, now we have mango. This is a giant mandarin sun glow, who will be a big portion of my sun glow project next year. She has been a little flighty for a little while. One of my males that I originally tried pairing her with wasn't exactly gentle with her so if you see you might see it I might be able to let her show you one of the downsides one of the possibilities that do happen from breeding even though you never like to see it is you can have problems happen you guys can see right there on her tail now that she's letting me show you one of the males wasn't exactly gentle. She was ovulating. Completely, perfectly ready to mate. Completely re receptive of the male. And the male just decided, I don't know if he thought it was a bug. Her tail was a bug or what. As she gets squirmy with me. But the male decided, hey, I want a chunk of her tail. And ended up taking a chunk out of her tail. Kept an eye on it. Was getting ready to take her to a vet. But... Thankfully, the tail, as you can tell, healed over. There's that scar there. She's perfectly all right. Never dropped her tail. She's happy, healthy, ready to go. She produced 10 eggs for me this season, but sadly, a power outage caused all but three of my eggs to go bad this year. And those three eggs, the male was from the mandarin blood to her. Just to kind of get that coloration, keep it going. Yeah, the sun glows are great, RJ. They're definitely one of my more, more favorite groups to work with. Um, all three of my sun glows came from Ashley over at Northern Bread Geckos out of New Hampshire. She's another good friend of mine. Ashley produces some wonderful stuff. One of the sun glows that will be being used this season is actually Mango's daughter. But the sun glows have always been great. It's a project I can't wait to work with. And in fact, I will go grab Mango's daughter. So you guys can see her. You can see Mango's tail. Kind of got more of a yellowish and not as much on it. Her daughter has that orange tail.
All right, so now we have Mango's daughter, Peach, who is still on the smaller side. She eats like a bouncer would. She eats like no tomorrow. No matter what I put in there, it's gone in a millisecond. But she's still a little bit small, so she hasn't been bred. We're going to get some more weight on her. Give her another season just to bulk her up a little. She is old enough for it, but all of my animals go to the vet regularly. She passed with flying colors at the exam. No parasites or anything. Each gecko is just different. They stay, they grow at their own pace. And she's decided, I want to stay nice and slim. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I just like to have my animals have a little bit more weight on them. The egg laying process can be troublesome. Some females lose no weight at all. Some of them lose a bunch of weight, then gain it back. Some of them just fluctuate for a month or two. At least in my experience. Yeah, RJ, that tail, I can't wait. I've been debating if I want to use that Mandarin blood or pick up a male sun glow for this project. I really am hoping I can kind of brighten up those colors a little bit and get that carrot tailing all the way down over the next couple of seasons, see what can happen with it. Like I said, she's a little smaller than I like. I would like her to be. She's sitting at about, uh, last I weighed her, 50 grams on the dot. I think she is old enough. We'll get some more weight on her, and hopefully, like, I, like RJ said, and like I want, we can get that coloration on that tail to work all the way down and kind of lighten up that coloration on the body. You can still see the bands a little bit, the darker oranges. Next season, I may pair these guys to that Mandarin Blood, get a couple of nice Mandarin Blood Sun Glow crosses. That Mandarin Blood is Het Tremper as well, so I can still be producing Sun Glows with, these, with him. He's just, he can be a little rougher than I like sometimes, but he did pair with two animals this year. Next year, hopefully, we can get his coloration and that tail. Just keep working, project. As you guys know, if you breed, a lot of your projects you kind of work with over the years to get them how you want them to be. It's how it's going to be with that Tangerine Radar project that I just picked up. Those GGGMPs. If I pull a dark one or two, I may split them off and do two groups of GGMPs. It's all about what you want, really. Obviously, there's a market. Like RJ was talking about in his other live. Where are you going, girl? Like RJ was talking about in his live the other day, the GGGMPs, Marsha spent a lot of time getting them to the light coloration, and now everyone wants the dark stuff again. So the market does fluctuate with what everyone wants. But really, you got to do what you want to do. I will pull out one more gecko, and then I'm probably going to have to cut this live and let you guys go, but we will definitely go live again at some point. So let me go grab that other gecko who is a male that I'm super excited to work with next season.
All right, so here's the male. This is a male high contrast tremper. 66% het raptor, if I remember off of the top of my head. And he, his coloration is just gorgeous. And he's deciding to go for a walk. Hi, bud. He is a wonderful animal. I can't wait to use him next season. He is going to go with an after female of mine that came from the same breeder that he came from. Who is Ashley, as I was talking about earlier. Over at Northern Bread Geckos. Getting a little squirrely over here. But just that coloration is beyond amazing. Let me check my records. Um, if you guys do anything like this, Ash, um, RJ's talked about it before. I've talked about it before. R Reptile scan is a great thing to use. You have to pay for it one time and then you can use it. But you can help. It helps keep track of all your genetics and everything, no matter what. Yep. Reptile scan, like I said, it helps keep track of your genetics. A lot of people do it old school on paper. I have paper backups just in case anything happens and I lose my online information, my reptile scan information. But the good thing about Reptile Scan is you also get, you can print out barcodes and you can scan them with your phone to bring up information on that tub in your rack system, what's in there, what they're being fed. I keep in my notes in there all of my animals where they came from. You can track your weights. Um... I can pull it, if I'm at a show, I can pull it up while I'm at the show and tell you the parents for sure of the gecko that you're looking at, or I can tell you where they came from if I can't remember off the top of my head. It's just a great thing to have. It's been a great asset for sure. Um, I posted a picture before of a, my laptop screen showing my reptile scan. And it was of Zeus, the male GGGMP that I got from RJ that you guys saw earlier today. And there was a section, as we get a little crazy here, and act like we're never held. Um, there was a section that's talking about how he got his animal, his GGGs from David's Fine Geckos, who got him from Marsha at Golden Gate Geckos, and tracking all the lineage back so when you get a GGGMP from me you're going to have all of the lineage all the way back to Marsha generations back when you get Tang Radar from me you'll have that same I'm not as far back with my lineage on some of my other projects just because I didn't realize how important that was but I can tell you where I got them from and that information can get, I can ask the breeders that I got them from where they got them from if they didn't produce them themselves. That's always something I can figure out. Uh, this guy, normally, I don't know what his problem is today. Normally he sits here and just hangs out. I can't wait to use him. The camera doesn't show that coloration enough. He is amazing and I can't wait for that coloration to come out with some of my other video, some of my other geckos. So next season, you guys can expect to see GGGMPs. You can see, expect to see some Trempers, some Sun Glows, possibly some Snows and Super Snows, Fascio Crosses, a couple of White and Yellows maybe. And we will see from there. But those are the GGGMPs, the, Tremper, the Jungle Trempers, some Raptors, and... Mandarin sun glows for sure.
more than are coming out of me next season as long as I don't have another power outage that kills off eggs or anything, which is another downside of breeding. Sometimes things like that happen and you can't control it. But I'll probably be producing some Max Snows and Super Snows as well, along with the Fascio Crosses, like I said. So those are what you can keep an eye out for me on. I am going to have to end this video here. And I will talk to you guys later. And we will be doing another live here in a little while. I'll let you know. As always, if you want, like, follow my page go like my youtube if you want and watch the videos that are going up over there every couple of days and expect to see some great things coming in my opinion great things like i said if you want to talk geckos or talk genetics or talk anything feel free to message me i am happy to talk i can spend hours talking about geckos and genetics um and like i said if you are looking for an animal, even if it's something I don't have, feel free to message me and I will happily send you to who I know has it, who I know is a good breeder. Because there's Hector, there's over at TGA, there's Ashley at Northern Bread Geckos, there's Karen from Granny Bees Geckos, there's RJ obviously where I got these five geckos from, there's Jason, there's AJ, there's a whole bunch of people that I do know personally that I would be happy to point you to. So please, like I said, if you feel like talking anything geckos, feel free to shoot me a message. If you're looking for anything and I can help you with it, feel free to shoot me a message. I will catch you guys later. Please like the page, give it a follow, share it with your friends. And hopefully next season you'll be seeing some great projects coming out. And as the time goes by, it's going to get better and better. So keep an eye out for it. Stay happy. And expect some amazing, if it focuses, amazing, hello, focus, things coming from me over here at Elemental Reptiles. This is Colin. And a runaway gecko. We're signing off. And we'll catch you later.